momentum. This is a chapter 8 in our physics book. Now, before talking about momentum, let's revise the three Newton's, Newton's law. The first Newton law says that an object will remain in a state of rest or motion with a constant velocity in a straight line unless there's a resultant force exerted on it. This is Newton's first law, as we discussed before. Newton's second law, if a net force is exerted on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the force, which we said F is M times A. The acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. We said before, like, the acceleration is F force over M. The acceleration is directly proportional with the force and inversely proportional with the mass. This is for the second law. And for the third law, we say that if object A exerts a force on object B, so object B will exert a force on the same magnitude on object A, but in opposite direction. Those are the three, three uh, laws of Newton. Let's look in as a formula, Newton's second law, that F, the resultant force, or F net, is M times A, mass times acceleration. This is for the Newton second law. For the first law, they told me that here the F resultant force is zero. In two cases, if the, object, the velocity is zero, if the object at rest, or if it is moving in result in a constant velocity, so the acceleration will be zero. This is for the first law, as we discussed in the first semester. For the third law, we say that the force from object A to B is equal to the force of B to A in magnitude, but in opposite directions. This is just a revision for the Newton's law. Now, all moving objects have what Newton called Newton called that there's something we call it quantity of motion. This quantity of motion today we call it momentum. So Newton, after he talked about the new the laws, he talked about moving object. So the momentum only for moving object. We they called it quantity of motion. So the momentum is a quantity of motion is a characteristic of moving object that is related to the mass and the velocity of the object. So the momentum related oh, is a characteristic of the moving object. The momentum depends on two factors, the mass and the velocity. So the momentum depends on the mass and the velocity. So by now, momentum is related to the moving object. Momentum depends on the mass and the velocity. This is the introduction to the momentum. It is related to the moving object only, and it depends on the mass and the velocity. Now, the momentum of moving, of, uh, sorry, moving object can be determined by multiplying the object mass and velocity. As I told you, momentum, mass times velocity. So the momentum of anything depends on the mass of the object and its velocity. Since mass is measured <coughs> in kilograms and velocity is measured in meters per second, sorry. so the unit for momentum will be, look at that, it will be kilogram meters per second. This is the unit of the momentum. Kilogram 
per minute, uh, sorry, kilogram, min, uh, meters per second. Like velocity, acceleration, and force, momentum is a, a vector, is a vector described by the direction as the magnitude. So by now, we have to know that momentum is a mass times velocity. Momentum is a characteristic of a moving object. It is, you can say it's a quantity of motion, quantity of motion. Now, it depends on mass and velocity. It's momentum, it's a unit, sorry, it's kilogram meters per second, and it is a vector quantity. Now, let's have now more examples. But before that here, the momentum of an object is in the same direction as its velocity. I mean, like there's a car here. This car has a mass. This car has a velocity. So the momentum, the direction of the momentum will be the direction of the velocity. Since the momentum or you can say it is P. Some books write it like, or wrote it like P is a momentum. It is mass and velocity. And since the mass is a scalar quantity, so the direction of the momentum depends on the, oh, sorry, uh, yes, depends on the direction of the velocity. Now, the more momentum a moving object has, the harder it to stop. Now I will give you example to imagine what is the momentum. Now, imagine now you have a car, two cars are moving. The first car, or both of the cars have the same type, have the same mass, 50 kilogram as an example, 50 kilogram. Now, the first car is moving with two meter per second, and the second car is moving with four meter per second. Now, both of them now are moving. Which easier to you to stop? To stop it, the first or the second one? Two meters per second. First one. The first one easier for you to stop it, yes. But the second one, it's harder for you. Why? Because if you find the momentum which is 2 times 50 it is 100 but here it is 4 times 50 which is 200 so when the momentum is less so it's easy for it's easier for me to stop it another example you can here they wrote it for you you can catch a baseball moving at 20 meter per second Okay, you imagine now you have two things. They have the same speed. Here I give you two examples, the two cars. They have the same mass, but different velocity. Here now you have a ball and you have a car. Both of them moving at the same velocity. Two meter per second, two meter per second as an example. Now, who can uh, which object can you catch? The, the, the ball that is moving with the same velocity of the, and I mean that you have ball and you have car, both of them is moving at two meter per second. Okay? Now, which is easier for you? To catch a car or to catch a baseball? The baseball. The baseball. Why? Because it has because it's smaller less mass. Now yeah. mass. Less mass. So, the momentum or a quantity of motion depends on the mass. As you see here, I, it's easier for me to catch a baseball because it has a less mass than a car. And if I have two cars that they have the same mass, but they are moving with different velocity, the one that is have a small uh, velocity will, ha will have less momentum. So it's easier for me to stop it or to catch it. 
So the more momentum a moving object has, the harder to stop. More momentum, it means the harder to stop. So here, they told me about one of the factors of the momentum, which is the mass. That the mass of an object affects the amount of momentum. As I told you, here I have ball. You can catch a baseball moving at 20 meters per second, but you cannot stop a car moving at the same speed. Why? Because the car has greater mass, so it has more momentum. So, let's repeat. Momentum is a characteristic of a moving object. Momentum, its unit is kilogram meters per minute. I'm sorry. So the momentum now is a characteristic of moving object. Its unit is kilogram meters per second. And also it depends on the mass and the amount, the uh, velocity. The direction of the momentum is the same as the direction of the velocity. Now look at this picture here. If both dogs have the same velocity, which one has the greater momentum? Which one it's easier for you to stop it or to catch it? The brown or the white one? The white one. The white one. Why? La sorry. Um, my question here: Which one is easier for you to stop it? Um, the but which one, one has the greater momentum or harder to stop it? The brown one. The, the brown, brown one. Because it is. Bigger than the world. Yeah, so here they have the same velocity, but here we have greater mass, here we have a small mass. So the momentum of the first dog is greater than the momentum of the white dog. Let's have some mathematical problems here. Which has more momentum? Here we have a three kilogram sledge hammer swung at 1.5 meter per second. So I have the first object here, the purple one. Its velocity is a three, and its uh, sorry, its mass is a three, and its velocity is 1.5. And there's another one, the red one, which has a four kilogram mass with 0.9 meter per second. Now let's read and understand. What information are you given? You have the mass of the smaller sledge the hammer. And the acceleration. And the acceleration. So here we have a mass of the smallest sledge hammer. What is the mass of the smallest sledge hammer? It is a three. Uh, three. The velocity of the smallest sledge hammer it is one point five. Yeah. The mass of the larger sledge hammer it is four, and the velocity of the larger sledge hammer it is point nine. This is the information that I have. Now, what quantities are you trying to calculate? The momentum of the sledgehammer. What formula contains the given quantities and the unknown quantity? This one. Momentum is mass times velocity. Now let's find, or let's perform the calculations. For the sledge, for the smaller sledgehammer, momentum. will be mass times velocity. <coughs> Three times 1.5, which is 4.5 kilogram meter per second. Let's go now to the second one. It is 4 times 0.9. 4 
which is 3.6. So which one has a greater momentum? The second one. I mean, the first one. The first, the first one. one. So here. So as you see now, not does it depends. It's not depends only on the mass. Since that the first one is smaller than the second one, but it depends on also on the velocity of them. This is how to solve the momentum. This will be your homework. Okay, I will post it for you later on. This is your homework for your practice momentum problems. Now. But teacher, the sledgehammer is smaller than the one. Yes, I say. told you, it depends on the mass and the velocity. But since the velocity mm. of the small is greater than of the large one, it will be have the greater momentum. Okay. Now. So here, a moving object can have a large momentum if it has a large mass, a high speed, or both. So as I told you here, just like summarization, a moving object can have a large momentum if it has a large mass and a high speed, or both of them. So here, momentum, Mass times velocity. So greater mass, greater momentum. Greater velocity, greater momentum. Or now both of them. So if I increase the mass, I will increase the momentum. Increase the velocity, I will also increase the momentum. Now, it's harder to stop a large truck than a small car when both of them are moving at the same speed. Imagine now you have a big truck, you have a small car, okay? Now, when both of them have the same speed, you will see that it's harder for you to stop a large car. That's why I will give you some, uh, oh, another example. Um, like you are, you are riding a car, um, and you are riding a truck, when you are walking on the same speed, you sometimes when you find that you press on the brake, you're, uh, that's why sometimes we have to wear the seat belt. Because if you are walking on the small car, your momentum will be smaller than the large truck. So your, your body, when it's moving, it will have small moving than the large truck. Okay, another example. Imagine now here you have a mountain. You have a mountain of, okay, or like, um, um, if I give you an example. Like, wait a minute, please. So it's harder to stop a larger truck than a small car when both are moving at the same speed. Now, the truck has more momentum than the car because it has a greater mass. So this is the another definition for momentum. It is an inertia in motion. Momentum is an inertia in motion. This is the definition of the relation between momentum and inertia. Inertia that we talk about in first Newton, it is an Momentum is as an inertia in motion. Yes, Rose. Teacher, momentum in Arabic means um, a differ for the differ. Uh, no, uh, zakham. Oh, like mission for the differ. لا لا زخم هي صعب تفهميها أصلا كيف بالعربي هي زي هي quantity of motion يعني زخم الحركة. Okay. يعني أي شيء في وقت الكار أو أي شيء بيتحرك. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, a moving truck has more momentum than a car moving at the same speed because the truck has more mass. 
So a fast car can have more momentum than a slow truck. Look like here, imagine that there's a slow truck and fast car. The fast car, it could be have more momentum than a slow truck in spite of their masses, like how we see in the sledgehammer. A truck at rest has no momentum. So that's why I told you momentum is a, um, a characteristic of moving object. Momentum is a characteristic of moving object. So if there's an object at rest, there's no momentum for it. Now, let's now distinguish between inertia and momentum, which keeps you moving. Now, what keeps you moving, the inertia or the momentum? Inertia describes an object resistance to change in motion. Inertia that I am already moving, but um, have a resistance to change my motion. But the momentum describes how much motion it has. Inertia, that I have resistance to change my motion. But the momentum describes how much motion it has. Shall I have a big, mo a, a larger motion, a huge motion, or a small? So describe how much motion it has. So momentum is your force or speed of, or, of movement. Momentum is your speed of movement or your force of movement. But the inertia, it's what keeps you going. This is a difference between inertia and motion. Or momentum, you can say it's an inertia in motion. Is it clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Now look at this giraffe here. This is an example why we need to wear a seat belt. Especially you are if you are a giraffe. Look at this giraffe here. Here you have a car, it has a velocity, it has a mass. When the car is moving, it decides to stop. What will happen? Look at the giraffe, how here high neck will go move. This is because there's a momentum. Okay, the car stop, but the body inside the car will, their body will move. That's why we have to wear the seat belt. So the car had a change in motion or momentum, but the giraffe resist the change. The car has a momentum, the car has, it has a change in motion or it has a momentum, but the giraffe, or I am in the car, I have uh, inertia, I have resist, resistance to change my motion. No, yani, I mean that there's uh, no anything can let me to change my motion because I have inertia. But when the car stop moving, the car decide to move, to stop, sorry, I cannot stop quick like the car at the same time. I have an inertia. I have, um, like, you have something that is inside my body. I have a resistance to change, or the, to let this force change my opposition. So I have, like, this inertia, it has a force. It can be 5 Newton, 4, 3, 2, 1, until I will stop. That's why I have to wear the seat belt to help to keep me safe inside the car if it is stopped moving at any time. This is an introduction of momentum. Is it clear? I know it's a small, uh, oh, it's a, a new definition, it's a new concept, 